YouTube, what is y'all doing? I got something I want to talk to y'all about today, per usual. In front of me, which is going to be right behind me, is my 2006 Lexus IS 350. This car is the car that's been on my YouTube channel since the dawn of my YouTube channel. The car that started it all for me. I think it needs a proper introduction. This is my 2006 Lexus IS 350. It is wrapped in Vivid's pearl white. I forget the name, the exact name of this color, but it is wrapped. Um, I left the top black. You can look at this car and see, like, I've done a, a decent amount of modifications to it. None which I really performance. I do have some cat bags on her, but that's pretty much it. Nothing really, like, super performance oriented. Let's hop inside and I want to talk to y'all about this car. So what I want to talk to y'all about today is the Lexus IS, primarily the second generation, which is the one that I have. It's the one that I probably know the most about. And I just want to talk about life with this car. I've had this car since 2017 and it's been phenomenal like i've really had no issues out of this car i think the main thing that i've had to replace was the alternator that went bad on me at one point and i took it to lexus to get some transmission seals replaced it was leaking a little bit of transmission fluid i think that cost me like 300 bucks at the time and i got all of that stuff squared away and this car has been phenomenal it has not given me really any issue it's been a super reliable car i haven't owned a car longer than i've owned this car this is the, the car that i've owned the longest in my life i've had this car for about six years now a little bit over six years now and it's just been a great ownership experience the lexus is started in 2001 when they introduced the is 300 I drop a picture in here if you want to see what that looks like. But they dropped the IS300 with a 2JZ engine, non-turbo um, VVTi. I think it was making like 225 horsepower. Those were great cars, and if you can find one today, especially in manual, I say go for it. Um, the IS350, which is the one that I have, which came out in 2006, they didn't give us manual transmissions with these cars, which I think is bad. They should have gave us manual transmissions. They did do that with the IS250, but you didn't get the 3.5 liter and you're down about 100 horsepower. So you had to kind of pick and choose what you wanted more. Uh, for me, that came easy. I got the IS350. 
but they also had the ISF. The uh, second generation was the first year that they actually put a V8 in the IS. Now they got the IS500, which those cars are dope. Now, my car has been modified some, as I was saying. Um, the whole front end, I got a new front fascia on this car. Um, there was nothing wrong with the old front end. In fact, I liked it. It just started to look a little bit dated. I think these cars overall, though, have aged pretty well. I think they look pretty good in terms of modern standpoints. Now, everything going electric with light bars and stuff, that's starting to change. But there's a cult following with these cars where it's always new mods coming out. So if you were to buy one of these cars, it's like, it's mods galore. You can pretty much make it your own. They even have light bars that you can install on these cars now on the rear tail on the rear tail lights that I thought was pretty cool. I don't know if I'm going to do that, um, but nonetheless, there's a lot of mods out for these cars. So I don't think there's a bad generation for the IS. Obviously, people have their favorites. Me, I like the first and second gen, and I like the last gen. The third gen was kind of, I thought it was all right. It didn't get a V8. You didn't get a V8 in the um, third gen model year, years, but you know it was still. A, I think it was still a great car. Toyota has pretty much kept the same V6 in the IS since 2006, and it's been. You know, Toyota's a company. And I say Toyota, but I mean Toyota, Lexus. They're a company that sticks to what works. So once they find an antidote of something that's reliable, they, they tend to keep their engine around for a while, which is good because us as consumers get to benefit from that. Um, they're still making the same parts for these engines and, and et cetera, et cetera. It's just, you know, it's widely used, so it's, it's easier to find parts for and things like that. So let's talk about some of the downsides of owning one of these Lexus ISs. Remember, I'm talking specifically about the second generation. So the V6 that Toyota has, while it is super reliable, they are known to burn oil, especially as they age. Uh, mine doesn't really burn oil. I haven't really noticed it as much, but I do my oil changes every 3,500 miles. Um, around 3,500 miles, sometimes I might slip, we might go to 37. But normally, every 3,500 miles, I'm doing an oil change on this car. I use Mobile One Synthetic. Um, but that's that's one of the things to consider when looking at one of these cars. I don't want you to take that and think these cars aren't reliable for that reason. They are super reliable. It's just something that you want to keep an eye on, especially if you're looking at an older one. Another thing is space. These cars are, while four doors, they did have a two-door version drop top, which I think those are called like the IS250, IS350Cs. That only came out for the second generation. They have four doors on my version, but they're just there's not enough space in here. I don't I don't know how they justify putting four doors on this car. The back seats, they like unless you have like some small kids or something, they're pretty much not usable. Especially for me, because I'm I'm around six one, six two. So my seat goes all the way back. And it's basically a lot of times almost touching the back seat. So I don't, you know. It's a super small car, so if you're looking to get one of these as like a family hauler or something like that, obviously stay away from these because they don't they don't possess as much room. They do have a decent amount of truck space, though. Now, the interior is, I think for the time, the interior was really up to date. You got a, a decent size screen in the center gauge cluster that you can up, upgrade this guy. You can replace them. There's a lot of mods for this guy. Um, it came with a good sound system. If you got a higher trim level, which I have the Mark Levinson in mind, and, and it's it's t even today, this thing sounds great. This this sound system sounds phenomenal. I think the interior of these cars have aged pretty well. Um, it was in it kind of in that area where you still got analog stuff, and they started slowly working in a, like a little bit of the digitals. Um, so it's super reliable. I think I think these are going to be some of the most reliable um, ISs that you're going to find because as we move forward towards like you know technology and electrification and you know, them trying to meet emission standards. I just expect all cars to just get really super unreliable at some point before we go to electric, and that's a whole nother ball game. So you can see in my car, I got black interior. Mine did not come with black interior. I actually started a swap on this car where I found one at the junkyard and I started swapping the interior to black. That's a never ending project for me, as you can see. The entire interior is not black yet. I just haven't found the time or the things necessary to complete it. But you can see that I, um did start swapping it black you see my seat belt back there is uh still tan and my roof so i'm not a fan of tan interior i think y'all hear me say that a lot on here if i can avoid it i will like i i would spend more for a car or a lexus with 
a different color interior other than tan simply because i just don't feel like the tan ages well like you can take care of it but if you're looking at a used car and the previous owner probably didn't take care of it i feel like it's it takes more to maintain the tan interior than it does the black and a lot of you uh, and a lot of owners just don't put the time in necessary to maintain tan interior so my suggestion is always to see if you can find one with a different color interior now some of the later versions you came with the f sport package unfortunately in 06 we didn't have the f sport package um but those had like suede type inserts in the seats and things like that and the f and the isf seats they had like you know the big f badge on the side of the seat and things like that if you can find some of those um i would say go for them another honorable mention about the interior of this car is the dashboard so during the time when this car was released, I don't know what type of material Lexus went with on the dash and door panels, but it would start to get sticky. And it got to the point where Lexus just started replacing them free in, in different cars, you know, just to, I guess, avoid a lawsuit. So I don't think they're still doing that now. So if it hasn't been done to a car that you're looking at, it's likely not gonna get done unless you do it yourself. Mine, unfortunately, didn't have that done. I ended up replacing the door panels my, on my own. I still need to do the dashboard, but as you can see, my dashboard does not look nearly as bad as I think some of the other ones did. Mine has held up pretty well since this car has mostly been garaged. So let's talk about the engine configurations that you got with these cars. So for the second generation, you got three different engine options. You got a 2.5 liter V6, a 3.5 liter V6, and you got a 5 liter V8. So the IS250 was a 2.5 liter, the IS350, the 3.5 liter, and the ISF was the 5 liter. The 5 liter came with 416 horsepower, 8-speed transmission. The IS350 IS250 both came with 6-speed transmissions, but the IS350 had a 3.5 liter, which puts you at about 306 horsepower, I believe, 277 pound-feet of torque. And the IS250 was around 200 horsepower. I don't really know the numbers exactly on the IS250, but that's what you got when you bought one of these. You have to choose between those three. The most common one you'll see is probably the IS250. Um, a lot of those, they had issues with carbon buildup and things like that early on because they didn't get direct injection and port injection. So they had carbon buildup on a lot of the valves. So every now and then, I think what people would tell you to do is just to ride those hard. If that's something that concerns you. I would probably look for more of an IS350 or even an ISF. I think they fixed those issues in the later versions of the IS250. But nonetheless, that's something to keep in mind if you're looking at buying a second generation version of this car. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this. I think of the three engine variants, the IS350 might be the most reliable. In the IS250, you had carbon issues that the IS350 didn't have. In the ISF, you had valley plate leaks. That's basically where coolant will leak through the center of the engine. And I hear that that's a, a decent amount of tear down in order to get that replaced. There was an issue with, I think they used some type of gasket or sealing maker on there that just, the coolant ate away at that after so many engine cycles and then it would just start leaking from the um, middle of the engine. So you didn't get either one of those issues with the IS350 and you still got a decent amount of power. That's why I'm saying I think the IS350 might be the most reliable. I can't think about an issue that affects this car that doesn't also affect either of the other two. But I can think about issues with, about of the ISF and the IS250 that don't affect the IS350. Now Lexus is known for its reliability, so no matter which three engine variants you get, I think you're gonna be cool with each and every one of those. Um, they're all pretty reliable. Obviously, test drive any car you're looking at buying before buying it, have it checked out by a mechanic. That's gonna conclude this video because I hear they're starting to race over there and they're gonna interrupt my video. So I appreciate y'all for watching. Peace.